What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And we are here in week one, officially kicking off the SFL season. After dropping that initial video a few days ago, we had 17 subscribers join the league. Great initial reception. I love to see it. The more subscribers, the better. We're going to highlight all 17 of those players here in a moment. But just a reminder, if you are new to the channel or if this is your first time here in the SFL series, let me just give you a little insight as to what we got going on. Fantasy draft. So all the players in the NFL are shifted around. Nobody's on, you know, the same squad. Not that it, as you see on your screen, it wouldn't be the same squad. But everybody is all shifted around in the league. All 32 teams are custom relocated by me in Team Builder. If you want to check out those 32 teams, card at the top of the screen. Go check them out. Put a lot of work into the design of all these squads here. SFL Discord link is also in the description. As always, join it. And if you are subscribed to this channel, I'll have a pinned comment down below. You can join this league as a subscriber player yourself. All the information I would need would be down there in that comment. As I said, the more subscribers, the better. And this is a subscriber interactive, le interactive league, so you'll be able to see your subscriber player stats week after week. If I play you on my team here, the Tuscaloosa Terminators, you'll be able to see your subscriber player live in action. So it's just a really, really good time. And 17 players joining after episode one is absolutely nuts. And last but not least, guys, channel memberships. Check them out if you would like to. It's two bucks a month or three bucks a month. You get to support me and you get a bunch of cool perks for being a member on this channel, including your subscriber player could have Superstar or X Factor Dev. So check those out if you get a chance. Let's go ahead and meet our new subscribers. Get into the first gameplay of this series and, uh, you know, be able to see the Tuscaloosa Terminators live in action. No subscribers on the St. Louis Sentinels, but it's still going to be a good time. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. We actually had four subscribers join your very own Tuscaloosa Terminators. All defenders, too. So our defense is completely revamped If you, from what you saw in the last episode. But kicking things off here with our new starting defensive tackle, that would be Mr. Silas Vaden. Shout out at Silas Vaden in the comments. Returning subscriber from last year, Star Dev. As I mentioned, all the subscriber players start out at Star Dev unless you are part of the channel memberships or unless you just uh, develop naturally. But a 84 overall, 83 overall run stopper with that 95 strength and that 90 block shedding i'm really hoping that silas here can be a force on our defensive line good with play rec 2 at 90 and also a pretty solid tackler with 84 really good all-around player and he's already in the top six percent of defensive tackles in the league moving on to uh his brother here Jax vaden all four subscribers on the terminators are uh, returning subscribers from last year too which i love to see welcome to the squad welcome back or welcome ba to the squad for the first time but jacks here will be our starting left outside linebacker 6'2 245 out of auburn and he is a speed rusher type of player and i would have to say so with that 95 speed he's definitely got some wheels there and also pretty good with acceleration and hit power and pursuit so again, just like Silas here, he's going to be part of that defensive line. I know he's a linebacker, but I'm sure he'll be lined up in, a, I have him definitely lined up in some rush sets. And staying on the topic of defensive line here, we have Aiden Leslie lined up at the right end position. Shout out at Aiden the dog in the comments. 5'11", 175. Interesting, interesting build for a defensive lineman, but... Maybe it's the opposite of what uh, a lot of my ex-girlfriends might say. Maybe size doesn't matter. And what he lacks in uh, the size department here, he does make up for his core traits. 86 finesse moves, that's really good. 83 play rec to go along with 85 tackling. And uh, also 82 speed. So not a power rusher, but we may not need him to be as long as he's getting back there in the backfield and getting to the quarterback at the end of the day. That's really all you can ask for. And then capping off the Tuscaloosa Terminators here, we have Mr. Austin Kringle. Shout out at Wildcard982 
in the comments or 9892 I should say in the comments he is 6'2 215 out of Buffalo and he is also a speed rusher so we got a lot of speed coming in on this defensive line gonna have a lot of speed in the box and he is also similar to Leslie as well 87 speed 86 finesse moves 82 acceleration 82 tackling 85 agility just really good core traits all around and with the addition of these four subscriber defenders I really, really hope that will make an impact here in our first game of the season. New QB here on the Rochester Rebels of the NFC East. That would be Chase Kaiser. Shout out at Jimmy DeLeon in the comments here. Chase is a scrambler, 79 rated overall. He's 5'11", 180 out of Ohio State. He said he wanted a Justin Fields type of build. So I also made you from Ohio State and also gave you Justin Fields number and even though he is a speedy, speedy guy, he's also got a cannon of an arm with the 95 throw power and also pretty accurate, too. I mean, maybe not so much in the deep accuracy, but medium, short, throw on the run. Those stats all look really solid. And the 89 play action, if you got a quarterback who can fool the defense with play action and escape and run outside the pocket, you may have yourself a problem on your hands. Got our first cornerback joining the league here on the Jersey Shore D's in the AFC North. That would be Aiden Grau. Shout out at Aiden Grau in the comments. Lined up opposite side of Chidabe Awuzie, so that's a pretty good cornerback room if I do say so myself. And Aiden here is a man-to-man -man lockdown player. 6'3", 175 out of Penn State. And he as well has 95 speed, not the best in zone, but if he's lined up man-to-man -man opposite side, a very good receiver, that is going to be a battle. You can, be you can bet your britches on that with the 90-man coverage. 88 acceleration, 88 jumping. He can also get up there as well. Obviously star dev just like the rest. But Aiden looks to be uh, giving opposing quarterbacks problems in the secondary. Salem Steelhawks in the NFC West were also another popular team as they had three subscribers join. And first up here, we got quarterback Cameron Moore. Shout out at Cameron Moo 8 in the comments. Also a returning subscriber member from last year in the SFL. And Cameron did some damage on the Aviators last time we played him. And he's going to be looking to continue that trend here on the Steel Hawks. 6'2", 168 out of the Ohio State University. He is a field general in every sense of the word. Nothing that he does poorly. I mean, 92 throw power, 88 deep accuracy, 84 medium accuracy, 92 short accuracy, and 91 awareness to go along with some wheels of his own 96 speed. So how do you stop him? Maybe the answer is you don't. You just hope and pray. But Cameron here lit it up last season, and he's looking to pick right where pick up right where he left off here in SFL version number two. Actually, all three subscribers on the Steelhawks returning members from last season, so you'll love to see that. New defensive end here on the Steelhawks is Mr. Knott's Oreo, who was a sack machine in the first iteration of the SFL. Shout out at It's Not Oreo in the comments. Six foot two ten out of LSU. And he is a speed rusher himself. Again, power moves, not the best, but look at those 90 finesse moves to go along with 84 speed. Also pretty strong with 84 strength, and he can tackle the ball carrier as well. Got good pursuit, pretty good hit power. So just an all-around good player. If if I'm adding you to this league, guys, I'm going to – I usually keep it around between 80 to 83 overall, somewhere in that range, just to keep it fair. And I give you, you know, star dev to start out. So I want to see that natural progression throughout the season and see who maybe gets a dev up, see whose overall goes up, et cetera, at freaking et cetera. But Daniel THG here, I know you wanted to be the hybrid cornerback wide receiver, but unfortunately it would not let me put a cornerback into the wide receiver role. So I just made you a corner for now, which you said was your first choice. I hope that's okay. But a good corner at that, 6'5", 190 out of Texas State. He's also a man-to-man -man archetype as well. But the blazing, absolutely blazing speed of 98 to go along with solid coverage in both man and zone. Man being a little bit better, but zone nothing to scoff at either. He can jump. He can recognize the play. Got pretty good awareness and overall just a really good corner. So expect him to have some good stats as we check him out at the end of this of these episodes. Two new subscriber rivals on the OKC Eels who are in our division, which means we will see these chaps two times per year and we're kicking things off here with returning subscriber Mason Buchanan shout out at Mason Buchanan 807 in the comments 
I like these OKC Eels uniforms, by the way. This is the first time I'm really actually sitting down looking at them. They're pretty slick. But six foot, 200, Michigan State Spartan. He's also a scrambler, too, at 82, but also a pretty good field general. He's got 94 throw power. He's got 85 medium and short accuracy. And he can also throw on the run as well. And he has some pretty decent wheels himself at 94. Mason Buchanan was putting up MVP type of numbers last season in the SFL. We'll see if he continues along that trend also. And then here is an SFL OG from last season. That would be Grom Briner. Shout out at Nagrom3466 in the comments. He, Madden would not let me name you Nagrom. It said it was profane um, or there was too many characters, which... There wasn't too many characters, so it would not let me name you Nagram. No idea why. So I just went with Grom. That actually sounds kind of cool, kind of like a Gronk uh, type of thing. So I hope that's okay. If not, let me know. But six foot 225, first half pack we're getting a look at here. And he is out of Duke, the Blue Devil. And he is a power back, but also with some receiving skills mixed in there too. So 92 break tackle to go along with 90 speed, kind of like a, and 94 trucking, kind of like a very Nick, Nick Chubb esque type of numbers but 75 catching 74 short route 60 medium route he's gonna be the third down back if he's not gonna be an every down back he's gonna be out there catching screens catching passes on the on the flat in the flat on drag routes texas routes whatever you want to say he's gonna be out there doing his thing and we're gonna have to try to stop him two times each year let me go grab the Vaseline and the Tylenol right now. New wide receiver on the San Jose Industrials in the NFC West. That would be Mr. Yeezy Fuentes, another returning subscriber from last year. Playing behind Zay Flowers, so they got pr two pretty solid options here. Yeezy being, and those, man, those are slick uniforms too. I give myself a little pat on the back. These were all made by me, man. I put in the work, the blood, sweat, and tears, and it's all kind of coming to fruition now. But Yeezy here, 5'11", 170 out of Oregon. He's a slot guy, but also got some possession type of skills too. 93 speed to go along with a very sure-handed 94 catching. He can run the short route pretty good, but he can run the medium route very well at 90. He can jump, and he's also pretty agile and got some good change of direction. He can juke a little bit, spin a little bit. So just kind of like a jack of all trades. And I'm sure he's going to be looking to make some noise over there in San Jose. Another receiver here on the Grand Rapids Lightning. And look at this receiving room. Watch out. We got Amari Cooper, Mike Williams, and then subscriber Floyd Butler. Shout out at Floyd Shady 2 in the comments. Hidden Dev, it says, but that's because I I, re I uh, changed him from a rookie, I think. It's star, just like everybody else. But six foot one, 170 out of Michigan State. Another slot guy, those Grand Rapids Lightning's uniforms giving me Chargers vibes a little bit, but I really, really like him. You see the GR on the chest there, and he looks like a pretty good slot option with 95 speed, 94 acceleration. Can run the short route really good at 88. He can jump, and he is also very agile as well, and he can change directions. So if you get him the ball in open space, he's going to be a playmaker. So watch out for Mr. Floyd Butler on the Grand Rapids Lightning. Another QB and returning subscriber here on my old team from last year. Just revamped the Toronto Thunderbirds. We got Jordan Baker here. Shout out at Neverland Productions X in the comments. Going to be the quarterback here of the T-Birds in the NFC North. And I know I keep saying it. I know I sound like a broken record, but I just love these uniforms. I'm very, very happy with them. But Jordan is 6'3", 218 out of LSU, a strong arm guy with 95 throw power. I would sure say so. That's a cannon, but he can also throw on the run, too. So whether you got him in the pocket, whether you got him out of the pocket to go along with that 90 medium accuracy, he is going to be a surgeon on the field. 88 speed, not the not the most crazy thing in the world, but still very, very good. So watch out for the T-Birds and Jordan Baker at the helm. And last but not least, on the Savannah Spirits, another team in our division. So we're going to see these last two subscribers here also twice per year. We got Caleb Hayes, returning member here. Shout out at Kraton, the dark one in the comments. Caleb, ooh, 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 those jerseys are nasty. I'm sorry. I mean, come on. How can you not love those? I'm tooting my own horn a little bit, but I don't care. Took me like a week to make all this stuff. So I'm just now kind of seeing it for the first time. I saw it when I edited these players, but I wasn't really paying too much attention. Now I'm got it on full display. But anyways, Caleb here, 6'1", 199 out of Temple, a field general player. 
93 throw power, 90 deep accuracy. He's just an accurate son of a gun. 90 deep accuracy, 87 medium, 88 short. I mean, wow. Talk about whoever I said was a surgeon. This guy is the is the resident uh, hospital the doctor in charge. I don't know what you head surgeon, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Okay. But he's also pretty fast too. 91 speed, 84 excel. And Caleb is going to be trying to cause us problems twice per year. And he's also going to be throwing it to uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. And new subscriber mate here, George Smith, who is a six foot one, 199 out of Temple, 82 overall playmaker for George, 95 speed, 93 XL, 93 catching, and he's just a route running specialist, nothing under 80, and also very agile as well. So we got the Savannah Spirits to worry about and the Oklahoma City Eels to worry about with two subscribers on each team. Got to see him twice per year. Heading on down to Skynet Superfield to take on the St. Louis Sentinels, my old team, my old main franchise team. And showcasing the unis here, we got our homes, we got our aways, and then we have our Skynets. I don't know if you guys ever saw any of the Terminator movies or not, but Skynet is like the evil AI that's controlling all the Terminators. So I thought that made a lot of sense. But super excited for some gameplay here. Let's see how our squad does and how our, our four subscribers do in the first game of the SFL. I will catch you guys down at Skynet Superfield and get ready for the game. And look at Bo Nix, our rookie quarterback, slinging the rock to Romeo Dobbs. And there are the St. Louis Sentinels who are going to be waiting in the wings, trying to give us uh, some competition. And I haven't played that much Madden 25 uh, gameplay yet. Played one game on my Akron Summits relocation franchise, which is still going to happen. I took a lot of time to get this SFL series going, but if you like that series and you're, you want to see more Akron Summits main franchise stuff, that is going to be dropping next. But uh, we're going to see who gets the ball first in our first action. Looks like we are going to be kicking it off, question mark. Yes, we are. So we got one of the best in the business. We got Jay Tuck. Should be touchback city each and every time. He boots the ball off, at least one would think. And Bruh. nope, uh, first thing I said in this series is wrong. So it could be a good return from the Sentinels. And they're going to start their opening drive at the 30. Desmond Ritter, who could not even make the Cardinals team. He got cut, uh, beat out there by Clayton Toon, and he is going to be their starting quarterback. Now, that doesn't mean anything when you're watching uh, C.J. Small's gameplay because even freaking uh, Jake Hayner or somebody could probably put up yards against us. As you see, the first pass complete there to Brandon Ayuk, who just got a big, big contract extension in real life. As I record this, it is August 29th, and he got a four-year, $130 million deal, I think is what it was. Not 100% sure. Uh, it was something like that. But anyways, Ritter completes the pass to Ayuk. And there's a nice run there. Opening run of the game from Cordero Patterson, the vet. And I mean, just like that, the St. Louis Sentinels are already down to the 33. That's what happens in my gameplay. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm I'm decent. Won a couple Super Bowls in the Madden 24 uh, cycle. But all in all, like, I'm not the best Madden player. And Cordero Patterson is putting that on full display. Man, come on. He has stopped there on the run, but like three plays and they're already down to the 12. I mean, uh, Patterson's trying to do backflips out there. What's going on? All right, we're going to send a little heat here, man. I don't even care. I don't like what's going on here so far to start. We got TJ Edwards. It's an outside run. Come on, get there. Patterson shifting around and he's finally dropped out there by Woods, but not before a seven yard game was picked up. This Sentinels team doesn't look like they came or it looks like they came to play but they're not playing they're not playing around with me as they're driving down the field with ease we're gonna go with my uh coveted 60 out jacks blitz here maybe get some pressure there we go it's alex singleton holding them to a field goal here would be some really good bend but don't break type of defense it's third and six it's definitely possible but they are coming out with uh three wide receivers so i think that we need to audible into some good zone coverage here and probably have Austin Kringle, new subscriber player, kind of out here playing routes and it's going to be a touchdown. Yep, that is Juwan Johnson, the tight end. So first points of the series are scored by the bad guys, the St. Louis Sentinels. 
and they made that drive look very easy. That does not look like the Desmond Ritter that was cut from the Arizona Cardinals. That much is for sure. So let's see if we can respond. Uh, maybe our drive can look, <laughs> look as easy as that. Something tells me it's not gonna, but Amir Abdullah, nice little crease there to the outside. He's able to bring the ball to the 33. And let's see what the rookie quarterback out of Oregon, Bo Nix, has up his tight padded sleeves. He's been looking really good for the Broncos in the preseason. He's the unanimous uh, starter. And he looks like, I mean, obviously he's like the oldest rookie to come out of the, the draft this year. So they would say most NFL ready, I suppose. And I hope that he is also SFL ready. That would be great. But we're going to start things on the ground here to our main weapon, CMC. I'm hoping that CMC can really do some damage. I mean, it is CMC making men miss. Price shouldn't have done that second juke. Maybe uh, Christian could have fought forward. But still, a gain of six is pretty good. This team used to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which I have no idea about their playbook. It's my first time using it, first time seeing it. So I don't know. First episode here could be... Could be a little sketchy until I get used to it, but we're going to go screen to CMC, and he dropped it. Wasn't really the best pass in the world. I should have held it for a split second and let him get more open, but, uh, you know, I just felt like the pressure was coming, and we had to go ahead and get rid of it. So now we're faced with an early third down. We got the, the Chief, David Njoku. We got DeAndre Hopkins. We got Tyler Boyd. So let's just see. Who can get open? Gotta try to convert this. It's the Chief Najoku hangs on. No, he dropped it. Ah, uh, David, David, David. He had it. That was a good. That was a good ball from Bo Nix. I mean, put it in the perfect, perfect spot for Najoku to catch it, but just could not hold on through contact, unfortunately. And we are gonna have to punt on our opening drives. Oh God, I suck at punts so bad. Get used to that too. Get used to that. I mean, it takes kind of a friendly bounce, but yeah. Need some good defense here. Maybe Austin Kringle can get in the backfield. Oh, come on. Pick that. Wow. It was good defense. I mean, I will take the bat down for Patrick Peterson, but I would have loved to see him turn his body around. May have had an easy interception in his pocket, but still third and 10. Not the worst thing in the world. However, we just have to play good defense. And where is he going to go? I mean, just wide open. Like what? Are our corners doing Xavier Howard and others? That was Juwan Jennings. So Juwan Johnson scores a touchdown. Juwan Jennings gets a first down. Is this what's going to happen? Are we just going to, just like on my uh, Summit's relocation franchise series, I mean, uh, that first game we played with them, I mean, we had teams in third and longs all day long, and they just kept converting and kept converting. That's going to be a run play, but it's shut down there. With the quickness, that was Antonio Gibson. Dropped for a big, big loss of four. And that was actually subscriber Austin Kringle that dropped him. And look at those moves from my man. Oh, my gosh. Kicking the leg. He's out there getting hyped. You love to see it. So we got the uh, Sentinels behind the sticks. But we had him behind the sticks once before. And we saw how that went. So maybe good old Silas Vaden or somebody can get some pressure. Good defense by James Bradbury. I think that we again have to play just good zone coverage in the nickel. I mean, it didn't work out too well for us last time, but I don't like Davian Howard being in the curl flat, though. I can tell you that much. So got to make sure. Oh, come on. Come on. Bait him. Bait him. Where's Ritter going to go? Step up. Okay, I can live with that. I can live with that. That was me usering up on a corner, which you will rarely ever see. That is the recipe for disaster. I was usered up on Xavier Howard and just no running into the kicker. Please, I'm okay with this result. 10 nothing, not the worst thing in the world. And let's just see if we can get a first down this time, guys. Fresh set of downs here. Bo Nix coming out single back. Let's take a little shot off play action, but need some protection. We got a receiver there wide open. It's Romeo Dobbs. Picking up a healthy, healthy gain. Getting this thing into Sentinels territory. I am so excited to have Romeo Dobbs on the squad. And I am also so excited to watch him in real life. I think that he is due for a breakout season with the Packers. Now, you guys probably know this, but I'm a huge Packers fan. So expect some Packers talk whenever the opportunity arises. Christian McCaffrey trying to get to the outside. I mean, he does. Gain of seven. I will definitely take that. Coach is saying PA bunch shot. I don't hate that. This could be Tyler Boyd or Romeo Dobbs. I'll probably look their way first, but also probably going to put D-Hop on 
Just a little seam up the field, but we got no protection and we're going to be sacked. Okay. That was Jalen Carter making the sack and making my life a living hell. Okay, well, that was not a very good result. Let's see if we can do that one over and do it even better. Tyler Boyd is wide open. Oh, he hangs on through contact. Got 14 of that back. Thank you. I'll tell you what, though, Bo Nix, I'm liking the way that he is slinging the rock. Feels very fluid on the release, and uh, that is definitely, definitely a good sign. So now we just got to go ahead and pick up this third down. I'm going to put D hop on a corner route. I think that makes a lot of sense. Put D hop on a corner route and maybe also have Najoku up the middle, seeing what uh, develops and what gets open here. It is Najoku. Hang on to that one, Chief. Thank you. Bo Nix now at 55 yards, and that is going to take us down to the end of the first. You know what? Let's run this play. I like the coverage for McCaffrey and just need some block. Come on, get out of my way, man. Big old offensive lineman Graham Glasgow was in my way. Or else that could have been something. But no score for the Terminators. 10-0 is going to be your score here at the end of the first. But we are driving and we are knocking on pay dirt's door. But just got to make sure that we cap it off with some points and don't let this opportunity go by the wayside. Second and eight, got some meshes here and also got Romeo Dobbs. Oh, we're just going to check this thing down to Pat Fryermuth and Fryermuth gonna say marked inches short of the line to gain pat's a little shaken oh no he can't be i have injuries off right yeah no way he can get hurt maybe uh i, I don't know <laughs> well i guess we'll see njoku's out there now and hopefully cmc can just pick this up that should be a score thank you first score of the year is to our best player christian mccaffrey and that is gonna even the ledger a little bit and now i gotta make sure that i don't uh be out here missing extra points that would be embarrassing that one should be good right down the center with justin tucker and that will draw the terminators a little bit closer on the scoreboard and desmond ritter is making it look very very easy when has anybody ever said that ever i don't think that anybody has really aiden leslie this time will use her up on him it's another run to patterson that time shelby harris is there to shut it down we are going to go pressure this time though i feel like we got to go pressure and Aiden Leslie's here. Come on, just please get to Ritter. Nope. And of course, I whiffed the tackle. That's going to probably be a score by Ayuk, and it is. See, third downs don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. And even, even like, okay, I did whiff that tackle. I'll be the first to admit. But, like, why was Brandon Ayuk so open? We had pressure coming in. It was a little bit late getting there. And then that's when I ustered over to the defender there, Xavier Woods, the free safety. And from there, Ayuk made us pay. And 17-7 uh, going to be your score. Again, kind of getting used to these uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook. I don't really like it 100%, but maybe I'm just saying that because I'm losing. If I was winning, I'd probably say, oh, man, this playbook's fire, dude. Like, this playbook's it. Not the case when you're down, though. I think let's try that screen pass to CMC. Couldn't capitalize on that earlier, but I tell you what, though, man. Ooh, I also like DeAndre Hopkins up the seam because that corner's playing outside shade. Romeo Dobbs. Yeah, we're going to him. Come on, baby. D-Hop, hang on to it. Thank you. I took a shot there, but I saw that outside shade. I knew if we led that thing to the right a little bit, we should have D-Hop. I mean, he is a 90-rated overall receiver in Madden. And Bo Nix is looking good. Bo Nix is throwing some lasers. Kind of want to run play here, but it's not given me any i try to uh do coach suggestions if you guys don't know try not to call like any crazy overpowered plays and this could be a corner shot to no 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 i was indecisive and you know what losing one on that one may not be the worst thing in the world time for a little te attack here and d hop is also getting pressed oh god it's d hop come on if bo nix gets that pass in there bang d hop keep going had to aggressive catch it if he could have caught that thing in stride, he slowed down for just a split second there at the end. If he could have caught that thing in stride, we'll get a second look at it. That was another dart by Nix, and I saw that press, and my eyes lit up. And you see, he just kind of had to jump. Ideally, you'd want to put that thing just a few inches in front of him, let him catch it in stride. But you know what? I can't complain about the result because we got this thing down to the nine-yard line, and I think this is time here to... Trust Christian McCaffrey. Let him run. Hopefully get some good blockers. Christian. 
Getting about half the yardage we need getting this thing down to the five. Got to trust CMC again, man. He's the best player on this team for a reason and just can't get that one final block that we need. I don't really want gun stick, though, but I guess that's what we're going to have to go with. I kind of want... Yeah, see, this is not the play that I wanted. This actually needs to be... This actually needs to be audible into a Christian McCaffrey run. It has to be because there's space up the middle and with the proper blockers. Are you kidding me? Shut down at the one yard line is Christian McCaffrey. And I mean, even the coach is saying go for it. You know, we need something inside zone though, I feel like. And I just, I don't know. I don't have that warm, fuzzy feeling necessarily. But if Christian, Mc if anybody could pick up one yard, damn it, it's McCaffrey. And there we go. Clutch on the finish. So Christian McCaffrey has both of our touchdowns so far in this game. And he is going to bring that score a little bit closer as we approach two minutes to go until halftime. And boy, these kicks are just not really online with me. Luckily, we got the best in the business. Texas Longhorn legend, Justin Tucker. Who wants to play defense? That is the question. We got Aiden Leslie. We got the Vaden brothers. We got Austin Kringle. I'm usering up on Kringle. Oh, man. Oh, come. how is Cordero still go? What? Oh, my God, man. That is some grade A BS right there. Thank God for Desmond Ritter that he didn't keep that because uh, Kringle was about to light him up. He might have had to go into the blue tent after that one, but he wisely handed it off to Cordero Patterson, who just refused to go down and somehow was able to pick up positive yardage. I have no idea how that was even a thing. Roquan Smith out here and these receivers, man, this is Desmond Ritter we're talking about. A Desmond Ritter to Jawan Jennings connection. They shouldn't be tearing us up. I don't know what's going on with this uh, St. Louis Sentinels team, but they just... Maybe the second half will be a little bit different, but they just look locked in, laser focus. Also, I don't know why we came out 4-3 necessarily, but you got to figure Ritter's probably going to score here, and that's going to be Ayuki again, and he is. So we have a chance, though. This might be a high-scoring game. We have a chance to go down here and answer before halftime, and we did kick the ball off first, too, so we will get the ball after halftime. So a chance, maybe... For a double dip scenario and to possibly go up on the scoreboard definitely don't want to give the ball back to the sentinels again you know because again we get the ball after halftime so this will probably be no we're gonna go outside to tyler boyd and get intercepted okay well uh byron murphy picks us off and first half you know our aside from that pick our offense was looking good but defense, I'm sorry. I'm just going to come out and say it. You go on record and mark this down. I think defense sucks in Madden 25. It is like, I mean, what? Like, how? How are these players so wide open? And Desmond Ritter, like, it doesn't even matter the overall of a quarterback, I feel like. I'm kind of breaking the fourth wall here. But I don't care. Because uh, I have been playing around, you know, with Madden, just playing play now games. And the defense sucks. The defense sucks. Kind of frustrating. Maybe it could be me. I suppose, but I, I just feel like the defense sucks, and that is probably going to be a penalty on us, or maybe it's a hold. I guess we'll have to wait and see. No, it's going to be something on Austin Kringle, roughing the passer, but it, it doesn't matter. Like, it was a touchdown anyways, and our defense is pretty good, and the St. Louis Sentinels have a subpar quarterback. How do they have 31 points? Uh, maybe it's either I suck. Or the defense is terrible or a combination of both. But defense to me, man, I got it on default sliders, you know. I'm not going to go and knock them down or anything like that. But it just, I don't know. Doesn't seem great. Still a lot of football to go. Maybe we could do something here in these last 37 seconds. The coach actually wants us to run a play. I mean, I'll run screen. That's the only thing I'm running. And, you know, I, don't, I do not want the Sentinels to get the ball back with Desmond Ritter in this high-powered offense, and we just have no time to throw the ball either. Oh, CMC, though, actually, with a burst. Okay, that changes things. He actually got us the first down. So we do have a chance to potentially do something. Got to be smart here, though. Want to at least, if we can at least get into field goal range even, that would be huge. Because, again, like I said, we do get the ball back. Um, but just got to play smart here, not do anything dumb. It's Fryer move. He got bumped. He's going to go ahead and catch it and turn up field. Okay. So we could potentially get into field goal range here. Not necessarily 
looking for the touchdown, although that would be awesome. And with all three timeouts and 14 seconds, we can still play the middle of the field. We don't have to go out of bounds. Um, Ehop again, though. I don't know what that safety's going to do, but oh, I had him and I missed him. I had him and I missed him. We had D-Hop go down and just call a timeout. This is just going to be a play, though, to get us a bit more field position. That's all it's going to be. Because we do got Justin Tucker. Now, you also have me kicking the ball away or kicking the, the field goals, which is probably not good. But it's Pat Fryermuth again. Not sure if he got out of bounds or not. We're going to call a timeout just in case and see if we can boot this field goal through. I may have missed that. No, I didn't. Okay, cool. So that is good. 31-17 is going to be your score. A lot of work to do, mainly on the defensive end. Offense doesn't look that bad. So I need my subs, Austin Kringle, Aiden Leslie, Jax Vaden, Silas Vaden. Go ahead and what did, what, what, what did I just do? Okay, that's fine because the kick's going to, we're going to catch it. It's going to be a runoff. Need everybody to step up and play some good defense in the second half. Look at some scores around the SFL here. Keep an eye out if you see your subscriber player in any of these stats. Maybe if they're going to load. There we go. Oh, it's the Bears against the Bears. That's awesome. I mean, what are we doing, EA? Maybe this is, maybe no one's played yet, but then why would you? I don't know, dude. <laughs> the Bears against the Bears. What's next? Vikings against the Vikings? Oh, no. Just more Bears against the Bears. I mean, this is just, this is embarrassing logic. Uh, <laughs> let's see, more bears against bears. Yeah, more bears against bears. That is, wow, what a doozy of a halftime show. All right, well, second half turnarounds are a thing. Thank God for us. We're going to need to pretty much pull out all the stops here. It's a two-score game. Bo Nix in the offense, though, like I said, really, really not the problem. I mean, they're doing their thing. It's just we literally cannot stop anything that Desmond Ritter is doing. I am going to go ahead and throw a double team, though, over here on Jalen Carter. And hopefully CMC can run up the gut, which is decent enough yards. CMC having a pretty good game at 11 for 54. So at least, if nothing else, that is going our way. And, yeah, let's try a little RPO. I was doing RPOs a plenty in uh, the college football Akron Zips dynasty. So let's see if maybe Tyler Boyd. I think he's the read. Ooh. But, I mean... No blockers there. That safety, who would have thought that he would have played up to play the run? John Johnston, but he didn't. It's a key one here. I mean, we have got to pick this up. No questions asked. Romeo Dobbs going to be the recipient of that. Okay, Dobbs turned up field. I would just go ahead and say, if we didn't convert that one, that very well could have been the ball game with the way that the Sentinels are looking and the fact that they have 31 points already. But luckily for us, we didn't have to worry about it. Uh, do a little half slide here with our offensive line and again got to watch Jalen Carter but CMC is going to get shut down for a loss of three by Jonathan Hankins because there was no blocking on that play slant routes always a little dicey for me in Madden but we're going to come out and at least see what the linebackers do oh that time it's wide open though it's Romeo Dobbs again and he turns up field does Dobbs have the speed to score he does okay we are right back in this puppy Got to play defense, though, but wow. Romeo Dobbs broke on his route. Uh, Bo Nix found him through it, so that way he could catch it in stride, unlike DeAndre Hopkins earlier. And Romeo Dobbs, with the speed, he was able to do the rest. And we got ourselves a 31-24 ball game here. Now, if we could get a stop, that would be great, because if not, we're not going to win this game. We're going to need a stop at some point. So, hey, here's a thought. Let's just go ahead and get it right now. Here comes Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Desmond Ritter. My apologies. They play so similar with their in the way that they throw the ball and their knowledge of the game. They, they play so similar. It's almost like the same player, really. So my apologies. Desmond Ritter got six and a half minutes to go here. He's coming out dime or he's coming out shotgun four wide receiver spread. And how about we just have Roquan Smith spy the field? Aiden Leslie or someone. We're going to see if they can get in and get some pressure on Ritter. And, I mean, it's like literally a carbon copy. Every single play seems like the same exact thing. And, I mean, Ritter's just making, like, these all-star level throws. We're going to go ahead and send some pressure his way, but I'm sure that it won't matter. Jack's baited now into the game, and it's going to be uh, James Bradbury. No. I 
I mean, what? <laughs> what do you? What? I don't know. Brandon Ayuk doing the running man. I mean, like, yeah. It's oh god. It's Brandon Ayuk. Okay, I, he's a great player. But like, okay, beats James Bradbury. I try to strip it. That's on me. But still, you should still be able to make a tackle. And then we do make a tackle and just bounces off of it. I mean, I don't know. They got 38 points. <laughs> it's like no matter what they come out with on offense, A, it's the St. Louis Sentinels, Super Bowl winning champions in Madden 24. We get a look and see. I saw the uh, Roswell Revolution beat the Portland Maine Lobsters down there. But this is frustrating. Still a 14-point game. I mean, I wouldn't be upset if we win this thing, you know, 54 to 48, but it's not good for uh, the good old blood pressure. How about a good return from Amir Abdullah? Not really. And going to start this thing from the 30. Now, CMC has some blockers out to his left. So as long as these blockers can hold, which they can't, I mean, we got a freaking great left tackle and Trent Williams, one of the best in the game. And he just, he just lets his guy, he just lets his guy leave the assignment. Like... I mean, again, not trying to break the fourth wall here, but like Trent Williams is great. 99 rated overall player in this game. You're telling me that you can't. I mean, he just like lets go of his block, just disengages. And for what? There's no reason to do that. I don't even care if you're a, a 54 rated overall offensive lineman. You just dis like, why would you disengage? Why would you disengage in that situation and just stop blocking? We need Trent Williams to set the edge. He is the edge setter in this situation. And not even someone as good as Christian McCaffrey could overcome that dumb blocking logic by the offensive line. You know what? Since I got some dumb blocking logic there, I'm calling my own play and I'm calling my TE attack. And I'm looking for the chief David Njoku all day, every day. So come on, let me see David get open. He's open and he catches it. That was not even really the best of passes. Usually it's a lot easier on, you know, when you come out with that TE attack. That's one of those plays that I say might be semi-broken. But that was, again, just a good ball from Bo Nix. Now coach wants me to call TE attack. No, I'm not going to do that. As much as I would like to, this would be a great time to use it too. No, not going to do that. But I'm going to go play action and maybe get Fryermuth or Dobbs here. It's Dobbs. He's open. Dot from Bo Nix. Dobbs gets into the end zone. And we just keep hanging around. We just keep hanging around. Tuscaloosa Terminators. We're in Skynet Superfield. Not trying to let the fans down. We just can't get a stop. Can't get a stop. I don't know what the heck I'm on. Yeah, okay, whatever. Kick is up and good from Justin Tucker. If you like offense, this is definitely the game for you. And I mean, look at that. 149, three touchdowns. I'll tell you what I have to do here is I'm going to always have to kind of drop somebody back probably and have an extra body back there to watch Brandon Ayuk and I don't want to do that but he is just carving us up so good give me a pick I mean how are you you guys are seeing what I'm seeing it makes no sense man the watching Ayuk side of the field yeah let's not have a uh, blitz let's just have extra defenders out here it's gonna be Ayuk again isn't it no it's not James Bradbury can't make a tackle that's gonna be a first down Desmond Ritter's on pace for 507 in this one. Got to put man coverage on Ayuk. It's going to be a running play. And there we go. Again, good run defense from us. We're able to shut him down. But can we stop him on third and three? That's the question. We have not been able to so far. This could be a run. Roquan Smith has his X Factor activated, which is great. Don't even remember what that is necessarily. But I know having an X Factor on is always good. Patrick Peterson was in the vicinity, but if it's third down and you're Desmond Ritter, you can almost guarantee you're going to pick it up, I guess. How can, oh, that's Roquan Smith's X Factor. We can see, we can see the routes. That's cool. I like that. Okay, so now we can have Patrick Peterson play some coverage. Okay, somebody almost got to Ritter. That's right. I put that on Roquan Smith. So now we can see the primary route of the receiver, which I really, really like. And hopefully it is going to most of the time be uh, Ayuk. It's, we can act, oh, we can see all the play art. I love this. Okay. Well, maybe I don't love it on the zig route. Yeah, I kind of got overwhelmed there with all the routes. It's like, what route do I 
really lock in on. But this is ridiculous, man. This is absolutely ridiculous. The Sentinels are going to put up 50, and Desmond Ritter is going to be the league MVP. And for what? Can I block a field goal? Almost. And it, it, even through all this tirade, here's the thing. The game is not even over because it's still a two-possession game. We're putting up points. Yeah, we are so going to have the worst defense in the league here. <laughs> I mean, especially if this is how it's going to go in, in other games as well. Let's just check it down to Njoku. Still lots of time. Full quarter of action to go. So don't necessarily have to get into, uh, you know, like hero ball mode. Um, not really going to be running it too much, but I do think that running it, at least in this situation, we're going to have our right guard pulling. So maybe we can get behind him. I mean, I kind of got sucked into the blocking there. And it's going to be third and one. Got to give it to, to McCaffrey, right? I mean, he should be able to pick up a yard, you would think. I do like that uh, the coverage here. There's a nice little hole there in the gap, so hopefully McCaffrey can shoot through that. And, I mean, come on. I know we're on the 32, but it's it's four down territory. I mean, we're going to at least come out goal line QB sneak, hopefully. And if I see, I do see a nice little lane there for Bo Nix. He should be able to pick this up, which he did just barely. Got to start moving, though, here. Time is ticking, and... Can we get Dobbs open on this corner route? It's going to be Dobbs or Hopkins. Probably looking at Dobbs first. I think we actually can. Nice ball from Nix. Hey, I'll tell you what. Romeo Dobbs showing out those six catches for 154 yards. Romeo Dobbs is playing a heck of a game. And so is Bo Nix in his own right. We got a potential. We can score here and get a quick stop. So let me just retract that statement. Might as well say that we got no chance at all. Because we can't stop anything. Hopkins on the drag. See if he can shake him in. He does, actually. DeAndre Hopkins showing that he still has the move, the moves in his old age. And Bo Nix at 362. Two touchdowns and a pick. Inside zone to McCaffrey. And he's not going to be able to shake him in. We got to go through the air, probably. Uh, RPO, though. I No, I, I called the wrong play. Oh, my God. Uh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. We can't burn a timeout either. So we just got to go for it and got to hope and pray. Yeah, that was on me. I called the wrong play. I was trying to call pass. And I guess I was uh, just pressing X. Probably just going to be looking for Romeo Dobbs on the drag. The delayed drag. Dobbs should have it. He does. And he scores. Wow. Romeo Dobbs is a weapon in this game. And if we can somehow dig... Oh, yeah, we got to go for two. That's right. Uh, okay, I forgot about that. Um, the RPO bubble. We're going RPO bubble. Hopefully, Tyler Boyd can catch this and run in. Let's see what those corners do over there. Nope. Got to go to C... EMC power through. He's going to be stuffed short. Still a one-possession game, though. We would need a touchdown and a two-point to tie it. But before that is even an issue, we have to really dig deep into the very deepest depths of the earth here and just find a way to play defense. Fentanyl's coming out man, too. I don't uh, – kind of surprised by that. I need Roquan Smith to play the middle of the field, please. Where's Ritter going to go? Give me a pick. Oh, look at that. It's Xavier Howard, the X-Man. This game is not over yet. It's not over yet. First positive play from this defense goes to the savvy vet. That is Xavier Howard, the nine-year pro out of Baylor. Jumping that route. Where was that the rest of this game? I, I mean, look, I count my blessings here, okay? Count my blessings. We definitely needed that. We got it. We have some semblance of a chance here. And I am going to send Tyler Boyd deep. They got one high safety. We got a levels concept. That's going to be Tyler. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. It's picked right back. Oh, my gosh. You got to be kidding me. Off the tip. Off of the tip. Just the tip. It's Christian Izian. Izian. Off of the tip. It was the right idea. We had uh, Tyler Boyd. It was kind of that same situation that we hit D-Hop on earlier. But Bo Nix lofted it. I needed that to be more of a bullet pass. And Bo Nix lofted it. And what the Madden gods giveth, the Madden gods taketh away. I think that we guess run up the middle. 
no, we can't. We can't do that. Uh, well, guess what? We're doing it, and thank God it is, and that's going to be Silas Vaden. First time we called his name, I think it's a big TFL. And nice to see the subscriber players stepping up, making a big impact on first down. I mean, we got to run commit again, right? Like, I'll use her up on the safety just in case it's not a run. But surely it, surely it will be. And no, it's not. We're going to get burned. Pick that. Oh, my God. Thank God that was overthrown by Ritter. Now, now we have to play lockdown coverage because if we do, chance we could somehow still get the ball back. I can see the routes. I know they're going heavy to the left side of the field. I see Ayuk over here, and that's going to be check down and the two-minute warning. So somehow, after all this, we are going to still get the ball back yet again. All right, here's the stage. Stage is set. Minute 48 to go. We score a touchdown and get the two-point conversion. We can tie this thing up somehow against all odds and go into overtime. I can't be throwing any stupid picks like I did on that last possession, though, because uh, that would just be an absolute deflator. But the chance is here. And sometimes all you ask for is a chance. I see DeAndre Hopkins getting pressed. I also see McCaffrey on the Texas route. It's Christian wide open in the middle of the field. Christian McCaffrey has some speed. Now, we don't want to score too quick because we've seen that the Sentinels can drive down the field in three plays. So that minute 42, yes, we have to score. That does kind of scare me. So I am going to go screen pass and almost kind of want to let some of this clock run off, but not going to do that because you just you just never know. Christian McCaffrey going to catch it. He's got some blockers up front. Able to pick up four. Minute 26 to go. We're on the 31-yard line. Tyler Boyd is going up the middle, but I just I can't risk throwing a pick. So, like, this is probably just going to have to be safe. Checkdowns and drag routes. I'm not even going to call a timeout yet. Time is really not as much of a factor as you might think. We got plenty of it. There's no clock runoff, at least not uh, when you run up to the line like that. DeAndre Hopkins is getting pressed. I'm at least going to look that way, but this could be McCaffrey again. Or that's actually Youth's check. Best fullback in the game. Reaching out to catch that pass. We're down to 35 seconds. Still not using a timeout. I understand that. But I just, we don't want to let the, uh, the Sentinels score. We can't let the Sentinels score in this situation. But David Njoku. Wow, dude. Wow. <laughs> John Johnson. That was a good pass, I thought. That was a good pass, I thought. I really I really did think that that was a good pass. Apparently it wasn't. Let's take a look at it again. I mean, I guess I should have let it down a little bit more. But Najoku was, I, I believe, the right read. Maybe... Whoever this guy is, I'm still learning the numbers. Boyd, Tyler Boyd. Joku was a good read, though, I thought. Guess I should have just let it a little different. And I'll tell you what, though. Uh, no, we're not coming out in dime. That's that's not happening. We're going balls to the wall here, and we are going to... No way they would pass this, right? They, they couldn't. We're going to go run commit up the middle, and maybe we get a safety. That's like the only chance we have for... anything come on it is a safety oh my god dude that was a good call it is a safety there's 16 seconds left we got a chance for something i don't and actually if we could somehow score a miraculous hail mary touchdown here that would actually win us the ball game patrick peterson gonna go down we got time we got time for like maybe two plays if we're lucky and what I'm going to try to do is get uh, DeAndre Hopkins in press. That's probably the only chance we have. Doubt they would. Yeah, they're not even going to gonna put him in press, unfortunately. Maybe if that safety comes up, we still take a shot to D-Hop. And I mean, that's really all we can do. Come on, Hop. Go up and aggressive catch it. He caught it with six seconds left. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, he caught it. He caught that thing, and the only thing that makes sense to do in this situation, we got to get somebody on a PA cross. It's got to be Romeo Dobbs. I'm thinking 
maybe DeAndre Hopkins up the middle, but we got six seconds and we got to draw something up that's going to get a guy into the end zone. So come on. It's we got one second. That was the read. That was that was the play. Romeo Dobbs was open. I held the ball too long, though, so that was on me. And we ended up taking the sack. But, I mean, he was open. That was, in fact, that was 100% the play. We got to go with it again, right? We got to get Dobbs over there on the corner. This may be a little cheesy, but I want the win in week one. So, come on. Just give me a little bit of time. All I need some time. Romeo's open. He catches it. Terminators tie it up. With zero seconds on the clock, pending the extra point, we will somehow walk out of Skynet Superfield with a 46 to 45 win. And I just can't even believe that that's a thing that we're talking about right now. Wow. I'll tell you what, man. This game may not be very realistic, but it actually ended up being pretty fun. But I got to make this extra point. So no more talking from me. right down the money and how's about them apples tuscaloosa terminators 46 to 45 and we our defense look they were ass in that game straight cheeks but we did have that pick when we needed it we did have that safety and you just if you're the sentinels you're like what just happened how did we lose this game desmond ritter had five touchdowns we had three picks with bo Nix, but we kept we just wouldn't go away, refused to go away. We fought and claw. There's that pick from the X-Man right there. They really changed the tide. And then go and engage eight on the one-yard line and guessing run commit up the middle. That was a galaxy brain play. And we are actually going to start off this SFL season 1-0. and oh. Bo Nix, 510 yards, and Desmond Ritter, 361 yards. Like, what, are, what am I looking at here? 10 touchdowns. This is like prime... Peyton Manning and Tom Brady dueling. 10 touchdowns combined. I mean, come on. Christian McCaffrey went 19 for 72. He had two touchdowns, though, which was really great to see. And then receiving Romeo Dobbs 10 for 200. Four touchdowns. D Hop 6 for 149. Like, I mean, this is just absolutely ridiculous. Let's check out the subscriber stats here of our defense. So we're going to go to Terminators only. And we get a look at uh, nobody really had anything too crazy, but Austin Kringles had Austin Kringle had four tackles and a TFL. That was great to see. Uh, Jax Vaden had two tackles, no TFLs, nothing like that. Silas Vaden had one tackle and one TFL and then Aiden Leslie only with one tackle. So we'd really like to see a little bit more out of the defensive line. Maybe that was just one game. Maybe they'll step it up next game. But all in all, I will take the W however the heck we can get it. Now let's go ahead and check out the rest of the subscriber stats around the league in week one of the SFL. Two upgrade points for Silas Vaden. Uh, did we like set a goal that was gonna, I don't know. We're gonna go, uh, since we have two, we'll give him one to run stopper. That's gonna bring him up to an 85, already at eight, playing up to an 85. I mean, this guy has the potential, but I also wanna put one in power rusher as well because we need to start getting back there to the quarterback and there was basically no pressure. In that first game, he gets a plus one to power moves, which is awesome. And yeah, he's playing up to an 86. That is absolutely crazy. And we got some other upgrades for our other subscribers as well. So Aiden Leslie, he why I'm not sure why they all got upgrade points, but hey, I'm not gonna argue with it. Aiden Leslie, we're gonna give him one to speed rusher, and we'll probably give him ooh, that was a good upgrade. Plus five to block shedding. Okay. I just like hit the winning scratch off ticket there. We're going to also give him one to, I did power rusher. I didn't, but another plus nine to block shedding on two upgrades. Okay. So Aiden Leslie could be a dog in the next game. That's a full, that's almost a full 10 points upgraded. That's absolutely ridiculous. Jax Vaden, we do need to get a little better in pass coverage because we do play a four, three. So we need our linebackers to play Good coverage plus two to zone coverage is decent, but we'll also give him one to run stopper. And those upgrades don't get him up even an overall point. And last but not least, Austin Kringle has an upgrade point of his own. And I guess we, I'm going to do speed rusher. I know 
the uh, run stopper would get him to a scheme fit, but I want to get some pressure on the quarterback. And were these speed and power rusher upgrades, especially speed rusher, was speed rusher always this lucrative? I don't remember it being that way. But we've gotten some good upgrades for all of our defensive line. Jersey Shore D's get the W over the Montana Mountain Lions. And Lamar Jackson is their quarterback. So get used to seeing a lot of W's in the Jersey Shore. But getting a look at our subscriber defender here, Aiden Grau. I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, please let me know. But five tackles for Aiden in his debut game. No picks or nothing like that, but a pass deflection, always good to see. And most importantly, his team did get the victory. Rochester Rebels get the dub over the Pronghorns, and we got, that was a low-scoring game too, 14-6, wow. And Chase Kaiser, the quarterback, went 125, one touchdown. McCarthy, JJ McCarthy had 113. So like the polar opposite of how our game looked was what happened here in this game, but Nice victory by Chase Kaiser and the Rochester Rebels. Ooh, and the Savannah Spirits, they're in our division, remember, and they have two subscriber players on that squad. So Caleb Hayes here, the quarterback, went for 197, two touchdowns. What's up with the low quarterback numbers here? That was, <laughs> that was not the case in our game, but Caleb had two touchdowns off of 197 yards, so that's good to see. And then the uh, subscriber receiver... Looking for, maybe I missed it. Hold on, I'll, I'll find him. I'll find him. There he is. There he is, George Smith. <laughs> Sorry it took so long, George. Still getting used to your face scan here, brother. But two for 38, and he was the recipient of his subscriber mate's touchdown, which you always like to see. Opika Silverbacks, though, dropped to the Boulder Rockies, and they got a subscriber QB, Kyrie Brooks. Now, this was a little more like it. Now we see some yardage flying here but Kyrie unfortunately even though he had 324 that's a really good stat line could not find the end zone at all did not throw any picks either so just not being able to find the end zone that was the main thing I mean he had 149 yards to Puka Nakua but needed a couple tutties in there in order to get the W OKC Eels also in our division they dropped to the North Carolina Flyers and we'll check in on QB Mason Buchanan here 247 one touchdown and a pick so not too bad, not too good, just kind of there in the middle. And then checking on the running game from Grom Briner, 13 for 48, no touchdowns. Brees Hall had one, though. And, oh, Alvin Kamara poached, poached the touchdown from Briner. Thanks, Alvin. We appreciate you. Thunderbirds drop a close one to the Albany Argonauts here. So we'll get a look and see how our QB Jordan Baker played up against Bryce Young. So Baker had 179, two touchdowns and a pick. Yeah, seeing some low... Low uh, quarterback numbers here to start. So got to keep our eyes on that. The touchdown pass was thrown to Cortland Sutton. But unfortunately, the T-Birds lose a one. That was like our game. We won by one. T-Birds lost by one. So unfortunate loss for the Thunderbirds. Hoping they bounce back in the next week. Salem Steelhawks get the win over the Portland Destroyers. Got three subscribers on this team. And quarterback Cameron Moore here at the helm. 276. That's a good yardage amount. No touchdowns. No picks, though. So not sure who uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire was scoring the bulk. And Cameron Moore had a rushing touchdown, though. So that is nice. Six for 15 on the ground. Remember, he has some wheels, too. So he certainly, certainly can scramble. Now, taking a look at the defense here, we had Daniel THG had four tackles, no picks or interceptions. But four tackles is a uh, good stat line. And then not Oreo, two tackles and two TFLs as the Steelhawks do pick up a nice W against Portland. Grand Rapids Lightning next up, and we play them next week. So the subscriber receiver that we're about to highlight here, we're going to see him live and in action in the next episode, and that would be Mr. Floyd Butler. Didn't have the greatest game here. He went three for 23, but his team got the victory, and remember, the Lightnings have a scary good receiving core. They got Mike Williams and Amari Cooper and Floyd Butler and Sam Laporta. So not a lot of foot, less foot, one football to go around and like four big name receivers. I think it's just going to be a week by week thing with different people being the guy. And last but not least, San Jose Industrials do get the victory over the Providence Red Raiders. And we got to take a look at, ooh, there's a, there's a good uh, matchup. Drake May, 347 and three touchdowns. How's about that? See if he got his man Easy Fuentes involved. He sure did. Six for 69 and a touchdown. He also throw t threw two to Zay Flowers, so nice victory by San Jose and Yeezy Fuentes. So hopefully your subscriber player won 
in their game. If not, you know, there's always next week. Still got a long season to go. And I, pff, that game we just played, wow. Uh, almost uh, 90 or 91 points scored in it. That, absolutely crazy. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.